Hi, my name's Colin. Welcome to Paint Watercolours. So if you're ready, let's get started. Now, I've done my drawing here, here and I've uh, stretched the paper. So we'll get straight in. This is a little mixture of uh, cadmium orange and burnt sienna. And I thought we'd make a nice colourful one today. I'll just put the burnt sienna in just to take the uh, the edge off the the orange colour. Put a bit round here. Nickel yellow in. Cat yellow likes. Just merge it together, creating a, a bright spot in the sky. Put some down here next to this gentleman. Some more nickel yellow. Pull it into the sky. Just a touch around here. A bit more of the cat yellow light. Maybe just a touch more of the orange around here. Straight that into the sky as well. And then with a penny, just wrapped in some kitchen towel. We can just put an indication of where our sun is. This is a little drop of yellow ochre into the foreground. We're just getting colour on the paper really. Just a little yellow. Just a yellow ochre in there as well. I've masked out one or two areas to keep it clean and crisp which is around the mountains and along the parapet on the bridge. The board is laying flat at the moment. This is a mixture of cobalt blue, aurelian and burnt sienna just to give it that earthy colour. And then we're just going to let this drift up into the bridge with a slightly stronger mix of Aurelian Cobalt Blue and Burnt Sienna. Now that the paper's dried a little bit, uh, we're going to add some colour into the bridge. So first of all, we're going to have some yellow ochre. Okay, this is a mixture of the uh, Indigo and alizarin crimson and I've just adjusted it because it was just a little bit on the red side just feather that in in some areas soften it I'm just going to drop some colour in really to yellow ochre and permanent rose helps lift the build, just helps lift the stonework feather that in Darker with the indigo and uh, crimson, and then we need a grey. This is indigo and sepia. Just sort of let all these colours merge. Don't be frightened of it. Bring it into the ground. Yellow ochre and we just take off just with a kitchen towel and then we can leave that to dry. I'm going to go back to the sky now that's dried off. And this is a two inch brush and I'm just going to gently re wet the sky area. Very gentle. I don't want to disturb the paint that's underneath. And then while we have that like that, let's give it a quick test. I, want this, I do actually want this to flood the paper. 
very gently pull the colour in strengthen it up as you go just to encourage the paint to flow nice and dark <clears throat> it always dries lighter and then we can encourage it to flow take off any excess water very gently just want to create some streaks Just move the board around to get a desired effect. Some nice soft edges. You can leave that to dry. I'm just re-wetting the area. I'm just going to re-wet this mountain. A tiny bit of Windsor yellow. Some on this back one as well. just put the dark parts of the bridge in where it's in deep shadow and into that this is a mixture of indigo and sepia gives a beautiful rich dark and I'm just going to let that flood around the page if it doesn't we can just take some out with the, uh, a damp brush And then you can just keep going on this bridge, like so. And join me in a minute. Put some stonework in here. I'm just going to put a couple of crags in here. Uh, this is just water, and I'm just pulling it straight down. The cadmium orange and the um, burnt sienna. And we'll just let that mingle a tiny bit and that will have some of the cat yellow light just wet it some of the orange colour on the sky light yellow weak if I can there we go stronger again. This is only just to shade it really, just to tone it. More orange. So just strengthen it up where you think it needs it. Just soften it all. Stay on this one. And then we can leave that to dry. Whilst you're still waiting for this to really, really dry, we'll do some rocks and we'll do two at a time. We're doing wet into wet. So and we're doing this one, keeping that one dry, and moving to this one. And when these two have dried, we move to that one. It's just so that they don't all run into each other. And I need some light patches. So I'll wet that one and that one. And with some of the sky colour. I'm going to drop this in from the bottom to make it quite thinner. When it comes to the top, we will fade it off. Same to this one. Just pull it over the top where the light would catch it and it would be lighter. Fading it into the grass. Same with this one. The green that we added into the foreground, which is the Aurelian Cobalt Blue and a touch of Burnt Sienna. 
and I'm just going to add this for moss. That's extra interesting, your rocks. Uh, really, I'm going to put some darks at the bottom, which is the indigo and burnt umber, just to create some deep shadows. Sky colour, I'm starting from the bottom. Do the same to all the other rocks. Okay, welcome back. I've just re-wet uh, the back mountains here in the um, distance, in the background. Same on this one, just fresh clean water. And into that, with the same sky mixture of the purple from indigo and alizarin crimson. We're just going to feed it in from the top and we're just going to let it drift. where you think the shadow side would be. I'll just strengthen it up. Maybe something like this. Whilst we're waiting for that to dry we come back to the crags here and um, this is that mix of grey and I've just added some of the uh, sky colour to it. I'm just going to pick out one or two crags just to test the strength. It's a little bit strong. Take some paint off. Um, you can just put crags in. Nice and pale. Just build up your mountain slowly. We'll do the same on this piece here. That's your crags put in. Uh, hopefully it's uh, turn out looking something like that. And what we're going to do here is just soften off the bottom. This is a damp brush which is a fully charged brush then wiped in a towel, a kitchen towel, so virtually all the moisture is off it. We're just going to soften the edge down the bottom. Just a bit of paint out. I'm going to leave that to dry. Now you've got that dry, I'm just uh, re-wetting this hill on the right hand side with the crags are in it. This is some cabinet yellow light. It's in the sky, but I want to bring some in here. There's the green colour, which was the Aurelian cobalt blue and burnt sienna. We're just going to add some shadow side to this uh, hill with a damp brush. Soften this in. Okay, now the all of the uh, mountain is wet at the back. I'm just going to introduce a little of the cad yellow light. It's a really and cobalt blue with a, a bit of burnt sienna in just for good measure. Shape your mountain with your stroke of your brush. Dark at the sand here. And we're going to come to the area around all these rocks. So I'm just going to re wet it all, the whole of the foreground. With the same colour as that. I just want to drop in just some indications. dark mix of uh, French ultramarine and Aurelian also with some burnt sienna. Just adding it to the foreground. Soften off the edges. Shadows to these hills. So it's going to quickly at the area. Just lighten up there. And then 
and we can leave that to dry. I've just added a, a bit of permanent rolls to this uh, sky colour mix and we're just going to use this to suggest the path. So I'm just going to re-wet the whole water, leaving the waterfall dry at the moment and to get the water in. Start a colour. So this is straight indigo. Damp brush, just tease it out a little bit. You can see where it uh, comes down. If it turns green, it really, really doesn't matter. Now the path, has uh, just all the shine's gone off it, we just want to put some pebbles into it. But with a dry brush, take some of it off. Just add some texture to the foreground. Oh sorry, now you've got the paint on, we'll just take a damp brush and we can just soften some areas out. Touch that. Darken some under here. Pull some paint out here. Turn the brush on its side. And just drag it over the top. This is one where I'm afraid uh, more is too much and less is actually more so I'm going to leave a lot of the uh, paper showing through. Just to show a, a bit of movement in the water. Yeah, we'll just put our figure in just to get everything a little bit of scale. This is just a bit of brown. All legs bringing together. Shadow attaching to the ground. This will help bring your eye point to this gentleman. out some of the areas where the watercolour has uh, gone its own way and it actually shows you where you can put <laughs> your cracks and cracks. Thank you for watching. Uh, I'll show you the finished painting in a minute. I'm just going to put some scratch marks in. You've seen me do that before with a craft knife. And if you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And if you'd like to see anything else painted, leave it in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching. Okay this is a finished painting uh, as you can see I've just put some um, wind streaks in, a few scratched in grasses uh, just to break the green up and uh, add a little bit of light, some birds. So all you've got to do now is uh, mount it and frame it. I hope you enjoyed this video if you have please click a like and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching.